All right, this is concept two notes on the chemistry of life. So chemistry plays a very important role in biology um, and understanding biological and biochemical processes, but we are gonna just do try to cover some of the most basic things because I don't want you to get overwhelmed. And one of the things we're going to look at all year is kind of the organization of life and, and trying to understand how all of these things work together. So matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. And chemistry is all about matter. And matter um, is made of atoms. This An atom is the smallest part of an element. So think about all of those things on the periodic table, hydrogen, chlorine, um, boron, oxygen, etc. So it's the smallest part of an element that still has the properties of that element. So you can see it here. We can actually go even smaller than an atom, and atoms are made of subatomic particles like protons and neutrons and electrons. So atom, you have atoms of an element. So um, water is H2O. It's two atoms of the element hydrogen bonded to one atom of the element oxygen. And there are six elements on the periodic table that are necessary for all of life. And biology is the study of life, so that's what we're really focusing on here. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And we'll be talking about these in relationships to some really important molecules in concept three that we can't live without. So atoms bind together to become more stable and they form compounds. Compounds that are specifically held together by a type of bond called the covalent bond are molecules. And molecules make up our organelles and organelles are like mini organs that make up the cell. The cell is the most basic unit of life. So anything smaller than the cell, all of these things, those are not considered alive. The cell is where life begins. Cells organize themselves into tissues that work together for a common function. Tissues organize themselves into organs, organs into organ systems, and organ systems make up an organism. Organisms that live together in, um, of the same species in the same place are a population. All of um, the living things in a given place are a community. All the living and non-living factors in the given space are an ecosystem. Similar ecosystems around the world are called biomes, and then they make up our whole earth, which is the biosphere. So in our class, we're going to spend a good bit of time right here in cells and organelles in the macromolecules that would kind of squeeze in right here. And then we're going to skip really tissues, organs, organ systems. That's going to be, that's where you kind of sit in, in anatomy and physiology courses right there. And then we're really going to jump from cells and organelles. So we're going to, and molecules, we're going to kind of be, in our first semester, we're going to be really looking um, microscopically at those things. And then second semester, when we get into evolution and ecology, we're going to go much more macro and talk about populations, communities, ecosystems, etc. cetera. Um, so that's kind of where our year is going to be. I'm excited. The other thing I really want to hit, I'm telling you, this is like, the briefest of overviews into the chemistry of life. So the most basic chemistry topics I want you to have a familiarity with moving into this year. And that's, we got to talk about water. Um, again, like I said, it's just a molecule. It's H2O. It's two atoms of hydrogen covalently bonded to one atom of oxygen. But it's so important because it's critical for all of life's processes. And water has some special properties. Um, that we're going to talk about. We're going to look at five of them, but you know, there's other things too that are cool about water. But a lot of these properties make water special due to the fact that water is a polar molecule. So what does it mean to be polar versus nonpolar? Polar molecules have an unequal distribution of charges. One side, so on water, it's the hydrogen side, is a little bit more positive. And then one side, which is the oxygen side in water, is a little bit more negative. Polar molecules tend to dissolve in water because water is polar and like, like, like. Like things, like, like things. Did not mean to say like so many times. So an example of a polar molecule is water. A nonpolar molecule, there's no separation of charge. So the positive, there's no like positive or negative poles or ends. And carbon dioxide, CO2 is an example of that. 
Um, nonpolar molecules tend to not dissolve in water um, because they are not alike water. And so like things like like things, and they are not like things. Um, some nonpolar molecules are carbon dioxide, oxygen. The oxygen you breathe in from the air is O2. It's actually two oxygen atoms of oxygen bonded together. Lipids are nonpolar. We'll, we're going to be referring to polar and nonpolar a lot throughout the year, so I just kind of want to introduce those terms. And water is polar. So a couple things that make water awesome. It's property of cohesion, adhesion, it's high specific heat, the fact that it's less dense in its solid form, and then the fact that it's a terrific solvent. It's actually considered the universal solvent. So we're just going to touch on each of these. Cohesion. Co, that prefix means together. It's going to come up a lot in biology. Um, a lot of the same prefixes over and over again. So if you remember that, that'll help you. So together, the attraction, cohesion is the attraction between molecules of the same substance. So it's basically water sticking together with other water molecules. Another way of defining it is it's a tendency of molecules of the same kind, if you will, to stick together. And what this does is this causes a really high surface tension, which is a measure of how difficult it is to stretch or break the surface of a liquid or its ability to resist an external force. And we see that with water, and we're going to look at an example of that. So these water molecules like to stick to each other. Adhesion is a type of attraction that happens between two different molecules. So water sticking to other things like glass or soil or, you know, in this picture, there's some water molecules sticking to each other, but they're also sticking to um, the spider web. So that's also adhesion. It's a stronger bond than cohesion. Um, one example is um, in a graduated cylinder, like we measured with in our lab stations for measurement. There's the meniscus, which is the curve at the top. The water is sticking to the sides of the graduated cylinder, and that's what gives it that curve. Here in this picture, we see that water moves up the dry paper towel and into this, so it's able to kind of be pulled upward because of that attraction between the two different molecules. Another example is capillary action. This is so important in plants and trees. This is how plants are, you know, think of giant oak trees. They can pull up water from their roots underground, and then they use capillary action to basically suck it all the way up to the top of the tree and everywhere that needs it through the xylem that's in the tree. We'll get into that a little bit when we talk about plants um, at the end of the year in our extension mini unit. All right, another awesome property about water. This is my favorite one if you can have a favorite, but it's it's high specific heat. So what that means is because water has such a high specific heat, the temperature of water does not change very easily. It basically need, means that it needs to absorb a lot of heat energy to increase its overall temperature compared to other compounds. So it takes a lot of energy to change its temperature. And if you live along the coast, this is something that you've experienced. So um, it is May right now while I'm recording this, so it's springtime. And when you go to the beach, it may be 80 degrees outside, but there is a cold wind breeze that's coming off of the water because the water is so cold still. It, it won't be until mid-June, over two months of 80 degree temperatures, for the water to be to really warm up. And then the best thing is, is that's what makes going to the beach in October and November where I live so awesome. It may be 60 or 65 degrees outside in October and November, but the water is still so warm because it takes so much energy to, to get it cold again that there's this warm breeze that comes off the water in the fall and just makes it so delightful. And this is so important for living things, not just my personal preferences and wanting to go to the beach a lot. Because, because it helps regulate cell temperatures in organisms, and spe specifically aquatic organisms are able to survive in water because there aren't these drastic shifts in water temperature. They're very slow and very gradual with the seasonal changes. So its temperature does not fluctuate very much, and this, again, makes it possible for things to live in water. It buffers large fluctuations in temperature also with Earth's climate. You know, so much of Earth is water, and because so many of our land masses are surrounded by water, it keeps just Earth in general's climate very moderate because there is so much water. So that's really important. Helps aquatic living things, but also terrestrial living things too. All right, two more. Another thing that is interesting at, about water is it's actually less dense as a solid. 
So the density of material is usually a constant, but with water, solid water, which is ice, it's less dense than liquid water, which is why it floats in liquid water. And since it's able to float, that means life can exist under frozen surfaces, like a frozen lake or in polar seas where there's icebergs and things like that. Um, and the last property of water I want to highlight, which is probably the most important, is that it's a terrific solvent. It's actually considered the universal solvent. And so what is a solvent? Well, to understand what a solvent is, I like to, to explain what a solution is. So a solution is a uniform mixture of two or more substances. So think of lemonade. A solute is what gets dissolved. So that would be like the lemonade powder. And then the solvent is what does the dissolving. So that would be like water. So lemonade powder is a solute. When it gets dissolved in water, it makes a solution of lemonade. So when we say water is a terrific solvent, it's really good at dissolving a lot of things. And that's because of its polarity. Um, but it's considered actually the universal solvent because it dissolves more substances than any other liquid, which is pretty cool. Two more terms I want to explain to you in relation to water that are going to come up a lot throughout the rest of the year. Hydrophilic and hydrophobic. And so I bring these up now because hydro is the prefix for water. Philia, or um, where this philic comes from, means to love or have an affinity for. And then phobic means to be afraid of. So a hydrophilic substance, that literally means water affinity or water loving. Things that are hydrophilic usually dissolve easily in water because they love water. Examples are salt and sugar. Most polar molecules tend to be hydrophilic and vice versa, but that's not always the case. Hydrophobic literally means water afraid. It does not have a water affinity for water. It's water fearing. That's what we see here with the oil in the water. So it does not dissolve. They literally do not mix. It's the, the best example of that is oil. So really make sure you commit these terms to memory because they're going to come up a lot more. And we're going to look at one water property now so you can see what it's like in real life and also practice our graphing skills.